Welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week. It chooses the horror movie, and they discuss it. Today, we're talking about 2009's Orphan, which was directed by Jaume Collat Serra. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Eric. Good job on the name. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so bad. Uh, yeah, so this is your first time, right? First time with The Orphan? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest, right up front, I knew the ending. Someone spoiled it to me probably in, like, 2011. I mean, it's it's been out for a while. 2009, yeah, this is for... Well, you know, Sleepaway Camp wasn't ruined for you, was it? No, that one was like, oh, okay, we're doing this. That one was way <laughs> different than this. So that's a huge twist at the end. This movie also has a huge twist at the end, which, you know, we'll, we'll, we shouldn't spoil it right off the bat in case people haven't watched this movie and, again, are listening to this podcast, but whatever. Okay, so you had, the, you had the, uh, the ending spoiled for you, but did you still enjoy the rest of it leading up to it, or what were your thoughts? Like, did I enjoy... The rest of the movie? Yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, this movie was good. I, I feel like, yeah, it was a little tainted by having the, the ending ruined. Mm. And I, I'm curious, like, would would 2009 Eric figure this out? He definitely would be like, something's up. What's up with this chick? <laughs> he says it right on the poster. There's something wrong with Esther. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. true. There is. Yeah. It's um, it's funny. It reminded me of a movie, which I'd love to do someday, called The Good Son. You ever heard of that movie? Mm-mm. Okay. It's not, like, exactly the same. But, dude, it's Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. And Elijah Wood's parents die. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. No, I've never seen that, but I know I know what movie you're talking about. It's kind of similar vibes, but like obviously it doesn't have a huge twist at the end like this one. Those are like kids still. Like <laughs> They're yeah, they're like eight. Yeah. But yeah, so so yeah, I don't know. You want to give a little uh, rundown of, of the plot of this one? Yeah, it sounds like so there's these parents, the, this couple, Kate and John, John I believe, mm-hmm. and they have two kids. One's an older son who's about like ten, and the other daughter who's deaf is like probably like six. And they tried having a third, and there was a stillborn um, situation where the, the third child didn't make it. And Kate is an alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic at this point. They're trying to fix their marriage. They decide to adopt a third child and do good in the world and you know keep moving forward and they they go to this orphanage they meet this clearly gifted child named esther who's i believe nine and uh they bring her home and it, it seems to be going well the, the the daughter the deaf daughter is really taking a liking to esther whereas the boy is like pay attention to me dad like i want like i don't like this extra curl in my house and doesn't really take to her. Uh, meanwhile, like it starts to unfold that you know she she wants the dad. Seems like sexually, and she's gonna do whatever it takes to get rid of the rest of the family. And it's creepy and it's crazy. And we learn that Esther is not nine. She's actually not an orphan either. She was in the psych ward, and she got her way out of not Russia. They made it seem like she's from Russia, but I forgot Bosnia was it. I forgot what country it was actually. And she has a rare disease, like a hypothyroid disease, that keeps her looking young, but really she's like 40. 33. 33? Well, might as well be 40, dude. I'm telling you, you're asking but me. Fuck you! I just turned 30. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, by the way. And uh, the mom's like, she kills the husband. The mom is trying to save the daughter. The son almost gets killed. Uh, I one scene I thought she freaking did kill him when he mm. gets the pillow. I was like, holy shit! Did she actually take out the son? We'll get into that, but yes, uh, in the first in the first draft, that that was the end of it. And apparently, the, the test screening audience was like, "What the fuck?" So they changed. That's it. messed up. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, that was messed up. I was watching. I was like, "Oh snap! That is you can't be killing kids." Mm-hmm. Yep, that, he did die in the uh, in the original version. Damn, and it pretty much just ends with the the mother and. The kid's still alive in the hospital, the son, the daughter pretty much being hunted by Esther, and the mom stopping Esther in the water and eventually, like, freaking Mortal Kombat kicking her in the throat (laughs) and just takes her out. She sinks in the ice, and we presume she's dead. I mean, if she's not dead, then come on. And then now it's just the mother, the deaf daughter, and... The son who's recovering in the hospital, which it's sad that the husband's dead at the end mm. of it. That's a that's a downer. It doesn't end like happy family. Like, no, this is not a happy family. No, yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's that's basically the plot of the movie. But dude, I remember I saw this movie at Hoyts when it came out in like 2009, and I remember like liking it. I wasn't blown away, but the first, I liked it. The first thing that stood out to me, which it still stands out to me, is uh, do you see who executively produced this? Leo Decap. Yeah, I know. I was like, why? What's well, this? It's it's production company that he owns. He didn't like. He wasn't heavily involved in this movie, I'm sure. I've like never really seen his name on much, so like for, for that was that stood out to me that you know that. But then also Vera from Marga. We always do that. What's how do you say your name? Vera from Marga. Vera from from Marga. Farmaga. Vera Farmaga. She was just in The Departed with him a couple years earlier, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, "Oh, I like her. Get her in here. She's too old for me to have sex with, but get get her in a movie." Holy shit! She's in The Departed. I forgot about that. Yeah, she's his therapist. Right. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, there's a little connection there. Uh, so anyways, I thought that was cool that Leo directed it. But I do remember seeing this in theaters, liking he it. Produced, he, produced, he didn't direct it. He produced no, it. No, I'm sorry. Produced it. Produced it. I'm sorry. But yeah, so I thought that was cool. But yeah, the movie, it's kind of, it's just like, it's sad, dude. It's just like, you got a family that is going through a stillbirth and... The wife lost her job. She's an alcoholic. Her daughter almost, or the daughter or son almost fell into the lake because she was drinking and not paying attention. Like, Which would make you want to drink more because you're such a bad person. <laughs> so she got sober and um, her marriage isn't going well. Her husband cheated and The, the on husband her. never, never forget forgives her for that lake thing. Like, right. is always holding that over her head. But, like, she's tr- she's trying to be sober. There's a scene, too, where she goes out, buys the two bottles of wine pours herself a glass mm-hmm. is sitting there with it and says no and like that makes you really like this character like no she's not weak she's trying really hard oh yeah i think the characters in this especially her it, there's so much depth to her like reading this script i bet she's like oh my god there's like there's a lot of layers to who this character is you mm-hmm. know and she's trying to do the right thing she's trying to adopt somebody that like you know she's like i lost a kid there's parents that can't take care of kids i want to help this kid and it totally yeah. backfires on her you know they get the worst person Ugh, yeah just bad luck on bad luck on bad luck yeah so it's a sad movie right from the start you're like yeah, her daughter's death it's just like everything there's something everything so so they're trying to do something good trying to like you know not be distracted by this anymore and they get esther uh, they mm-hmm. go to this. Uh, they go to this orphanage or whatever, and they find this girl who's painting, and she's charismatic, and she's cute, and she's just like perfect. And they're immediately in love with her, and they adopt her from like a nun. So the nun, uh, who's great, I love whatever actress that mm-hmm. was. But yeah, so she was uh, she was a little like hesitant because she's like, yeah, she doesn't really get along with other girls or whatever. She's got these ribbons on her neck that like we don't talk about her touch, just like weird things. But they overlook it. Yeah, I mean, that's the big, like, something's up with those ribbons, right? You get that when watching. I mean, we watched enough horror movies and stuff. Like, okay, something's off. The nun, she, when they're, like, when she's painting and the family's seeing her, you don't really get that, like, oh, boy, something's wrong with that girl. Mm-hmm. Like, But she is hesitant. You can see the nun, and she did, I forgot the actress's name, too, but she did a good job of portraying something that's, like, something's off, but I have to let this continue. Like, you get that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it, it really, yeah, that actress did a great job of making you feel like there's a reason she's uneasy, but she mm-hmm. can't she can't pinpoint it herself, you know? So that was that was really cool, the very nuanced performance. And then, yeah, so they get home. Everything seems pretty normal. The girl's like, oh, my God, you have a piano? And, like, I, I can paint and blah, blah, blah. And she's having a great time, really takes to the sister. I don't know, though. I feel like there should have been conversation with the other kids being like, do you want another sister, brother? I feel like the, the yeah. son would have been like, fuck that. Like, you know, but... Yeah, this isn't a dog you get from the pound, take a couple Instagram pictures of, and then take back. Like, this is not this is not that case. This is a human being you're bringing yeah. into your house. This is someone that's going to be with you the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. So there should have been a conversation with the kids, I feel like. I mean, or, or at least, like, let's solidify our marriage a little more before we can continue this right like it seemed like things were on the up a little bit but it wasn't like a hundred percent better i mean dude you probably shouldn't be talking about adopting a child in your first year of sobriety i just i don't know. you're right you're right can i ask you have you ever like gotten to a point and we can cut this out completely but did you ever like pour yourself something and like pour it out Mm-mm. like she does no no i haven't no <clears throat> i'd be honest 100 okay. percent honest no i've never i've never done that um dude like 
knowing how tempting that must be that she went through all that. Like, dude, you know, I can relate to her because that one scene where she goes into the liquor store and she doesn't want to be seen, so she just throws, like, 50 bucks on the counter for two bottles of wine. She's like, you can just keep it just to get out of there, dude. Like, Oof. The, I, I've never done that, but I can understand what she's going through right there. So that was really well written, really well acted. Um, I've never, you know, gotten a bottle of anything and poured it at home or whatever, but, like, that's so close to lighting the fuse and she didn't do it granted she should have thrown the other bottle away i have had yeah. like a really bad night when i was drinking where i woke up the next morning and poured like all of my alcohol out like i had those days but yeah but for her she should have got rid of both bottles it just leaves unnecessary evidence and questioning and nobody's gonna believe her so it's just like you should have just got rid of both of them or immediately told her husband being like this is what i did last night what well, was it was it was a bad like first of all like other things happened and then they found, like Esther found the bottle obviously of course right. she found the bottle because she obviously didn't keep it out she probably hid it but yeah I mean that's something you got to confront and tell your husband like hey by the way like I almost got there but I stopped myself yeah she, she, she should have said something if she was honest right from the start it wouldn't be weird but the fact that they found it and she has to explain after the fact but also like the therapist like hey 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 this is supposed to be judgment free what are you doing you're like totally teaming up on me here and making me seem like so i don't know that oh seems... that therapist was terrible yeah terrible sucked. she was totally not helping the situation yeah so they're seeing a therapist they're trying to make everything work and it's a real struggle she's unemployed she's trying to focus on esther but her and esther are not connecting at all Esther is super perceptive about everything that's going on and is actively trying to create a wedge between their relationship, between uh, the kids, you know, everything like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. A few times I did want the daughter to be like, why can't you talk to your parents? Like, say something. I think I think, I think, think the the point, too, I'm also thinking, like, if I put myself in this, I don't think I'd ever put myself in a situation where I had to, also adopting kids is, like, insanely expensive. And the process is pretty it's not just like, oh, we'll get the paperwork in two weeks and yeah, you got her. Like, it's pretty, pretty grueling from what I've heard. I think the point where I'm like, okay, you're going back, like, would be when she's playing, like, Vivaldi on the piano and, like, just going ham. I'd be like, all right, nope. <laughs> nope. You're a prodigy. Like, you're, like, an actual prodigy. No, nope. no. Nope. You lied to me. You had me teach you lessons and you pretended to be bad. Nope. Going back. I don't trust you. Nope. 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 Yeah. Alex, sorry. Going back to the pound. Get your Insta get your Instagram photos. Oh, and back to the pound. Don't get your Instagram. It's like before Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's yeah. There's a lot of red flags that they kind of overlook. There's a lot riding on the fact that the kids don't say anything because they could easily just be like, "She's fucking crazy," and that could have been the moment they're like, "Just get out of here," <laughs> you know. But but yeah. they don't because they think like, "No, this this woman <laughs> will kill our parents." Like. If we, if we say anything, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot riding on the kids being quiet, you know, because if they did just open up and be like, no, she's she's doing this, and they could be like, what's going on? And, like, there could have been a moment, but, you know, because I don't think Esther, if she's not using manipulation and, like, you know, home aloneing traps and stuff like that, like, she's not a threat. You know, she gets a gun, then she's a threat, but, like, if her and John had a fist fight, I'm going John every time, you know? Or if her and Vera for, for Marga have gotten a fight, 100% Vera is going to win. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, she manipulates things, you know, twists things around. She's, she's been there, done that. Esther's been there, done that. It seems like a few, like, we see her diary of all the different husbands, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That in families she's destroyed. So she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Biggest gripe with this movie. And it's so stupid, but it's so important to me. There's a scene where Vera from her, Vera, she finds <laughs> the, the diary. She finds Esther's diary and it says the Sarn Institution, right? Mm -hmm. This is in Estonia, okay? Why would it be written in English? I didn't notice that the Bible was written in English. Not the words in the but Bible. But the Sarn, yeah. It says the, the Sarn institute. institution. So the book is from the Sarn institution. Why would that be in English if it's from Estonia? And she has that book with her, and the only way that Vera is able to find out where she's from is by seeing, oh, Sarn institution, and she calls Estonia or whatever. Dude. That would be written in Estonian or whatever well, language. That, oh, well, then you just add an extra like minute to the movie where she has to translate what that thing is in the back. And then, oh, Do that. That pissed me they, off. They could, they could have done that. They could have done that. And I, I agree with you, yeah. But that's like a that's just a way to just leapfrog over an extra minute of looking up stuff. I know. Nobody's, nobody's thinking like that. But, but, but for me, I was like, that's this book is from Estonia. Why is it in English? No, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
you know? know. And they have to call a place. Point. They call the place, and the, the woman that answers the phone doesn't even speak English. So why would the book be written with English? Like, like make sure you stamp this book so they know it's from the Sarn Institute, but make sure it's not in the language so nobody knows what the fuck it's at. Like, what are we talking <laughs> So that pissed me off. Yeah. Uh, the other thing about, like, John, dude, I'm sorry, but, like, you got to believe your wife to some degree. Like, to some... Like, he's, a, he's a bad... He's a bad husband. He, you know sure. what is the worst part is, dude, is he, the only time he snaps is at the end. It's like, it's like Vera has been talking about how horrible she is. Like, you need to believe me. Look at what's going on. He's like, I don't want to hear it. And then at the end... She's like coming on to him. Esther's coming on to John, and he's like. It took I him can't... like a good. It took him a good like five minutes to realize. Like, wait, but he, <laughs> they made it seem like he's drunk, right? Yeah, Whatever. he was drunk, and he was smoking cigarettes inside, and you know, his son's in the hospital. And yeah, he's about to snap, and then his daughter comes on, or stepdaughter comes on to him, and he finally is just like, I can't handle this. It's like, why your daughter, your wife's been talking about this for like a, for weeks. You didn't listen to her at all. It's like, wait, wait a minute. This is this is off. Like, dude, yeah, no shit. It's off, dude. That scene was it's creepy. Ooh, I know, so Ooh. cringe. Like how she's twelve. The actress is twelve, and you know whatever Peter Sarsgaard or whatever is in, probably in his forties, and she's coming on to him in a very like looks like she's grabbing his dick in one scene, and you're like, oh, how'd they yeah. do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty good. That's bad. good. That's good. Remember that there's a show on, it was on, I never saw it, but I saw it advertised where it was like this, like the same like disease that Esther has or situation where she's like older, but has like, looks like a kid, like a kid kid. Oh my God. I've heard of There's this. a show about it. It's a reality show, right? I'm like, all right, we need to figure out who watched the show. And put them on the sex offender list. Like, this is... You don't watch this show, like, to watch this. Like, it, it was so weird that that existed. I, I know what you're talking... I haven't seen this show. I don't even know what it's called, but it's a reality show. show. <laughs> the pedophile show on the Learning Channel. No, but it's about... It's about, uh, like, a girl who's, like, 22 but looks like she's 8. And her boyfriend who's like, I just think she's hot. And he's just, like, a normal guy. And it's like, yeah, dude. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So that's weird. Um, I don't know why that's on TV. But anyways. So that's kind mm-hmm. of like this movie. But, like, you know, this the, Esther has a uh, hormone deficiency. So she looks like she's a kid. But granted, dude, she puts so much makeup on. You don't think her parents are going to be like, hey, why you? you got makeup on like you got a lot of makeup on like you can tell when someone's wearing makeup so yeah she looks like a crazy like smoker gargoyle woman at the end when she finally takes off all of her makeup but in the beginning she looks like a little like porcelain doll girl and, and the actor was actually a kid she's dude. 12 this wasn't right so she was 12 in this movie okay yeah, so that's, they uh... age her up to look like a 33 year old at the end who's seen some shit you know but in the beginning, she looks like a little girl, you know? But, like, I'm like, hmm. I'm like, how do your parents not notice? So it's, it, it's an interesting concept, but, like, that's a great... You gotta be careful shooting that one. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's weird. It's weird. Yeah. So, um, Esther, obviously, she's a 33-year-old woman who is just mentally deranged and has done this at least, like, six or seven times based on the, the pictures that she's saved. So she infiltrates families pretends she's a kid tries to get with the father the father's always like uh what and then you know same thing seems to keep happening they did make a prequel like last year called like, or- yeah a year ago right? yeah. yeah orphan first kill i haven't seen it it's got the same actress and it's a prequel so that's like it's like that uh american or wet hot american summer show <laughs> or for the first day of camp or that so she look older in this one or like i mean she has to they they used a lot of makeup and she looks dude she looks scary honestly i saw the i saw a trailer and i was like she looks like you remember that system of a down music video ariel you remember that fucking yeah, song? dude she looks like, like the alien from that music video might we might have to do that one just to just to, to know about it that'd be cool i dude i feel like we got to do that in jeepers creepers too just to like round them out but that, I'm sure, explains the first time that Esther killed and the first family that she kills and all that stuff and how we got to here, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. So, I guess a bit of the ending, um, she she basically hurts the son. How did she hurt the son? How did he get so hurt? Pushed out of the... the well, he, there's a fire in the clubhouse, and then he, like, falls and, like, really gets hurt. And then she was going to... Hold on, sorry. Before we get there, there's so much other stuff we got to talk about. So there's the uh, the nun who comes back to be, like... 
Dude, violent killing of her. Yes. Holy shit. So the nun, which I would expect anybody would do, they want to do a checkup to make sure that the family's not crazy and make sure everything's going okay. So she comes to visit unexpectedly, and Esther's like, shit, we got to get rid of her because the the they're talking about, like, hey, I don't really, like, accidents just keep happening around her. <laughs> like, you know, she was at the JFK assassination. I don't know what's going on, but she's she's a bad person. So... Then Esther takes the young deaf girl. She's like, we got to, you know, we got to get this bad lady or whatever. So after the nun leaves, Esther and the little girl run outside and they're basically, they use the little girl to like flag the car down. But dude, if the nun didn't swerve out of the way, she would have hit the little girl right then and there. What would that have done? So the little girl's dead. Esther's like, she runs back to the house and they're like, oh my God, our daughter's dead. And then the nun's like, I don't know. She was out in the street. And then it's just gonna be like, Esther, where were you? Like, what, like what would have happened if that, because it looked like she was about to hit the girl and then she swerved right at the last second. Right. So Yeah. That, I mean, it, it would have looked, be- I mean, I think she was just hoping that the nun would just, I mean, she could have killed Max. No, no doubt. But Dude. And she's like smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not really paying attention. And all of a sudden the little girl's right in the, like Esther pushes, pushes her in the middle of the street, hoping that the nun hits her with the car it's like ah. so the nun doesn't she crashes and she gets out she's like oh my god max are you okay and then she takes the hammer esther takes a hammer and smashes the nun to death Whew. yeah violent Dude. very very violent yeah and the little six-year-old girl sees it like she's seeing somebody get murdered with a hammer in front of her like oh anyways so that was brutal um the next another not kill but another just kind of like fuck is her, the little girl, the like the, the bully girl that makes fun of her at school. She's like, you look like stupid or whatever. And then she pushes her and breaks her leg. It's like, ooh. Yeah. My, my, my biggest gripe is not the ending, but when, like, Vera from Murder, Burger, Burger, yeah. falls through the, like, the glass atrium or whatever and lands on Esther, and it's just like, it's over. Like, no, it's not. Tie her up at least. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, like, that was so stupid. That is the most, like, formula. Like, you clearly didn't kill her. Like, no. if you survived, she survived. Yeah. There is an alternate ending, though, and it's bonkers if you want to check that out at some point. Like, ends with Esther still alive after that scene. She, like, comes down the stairs to the cops, and she's still playing, like, I'm a victim girl kind of thing or something. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't have worked because they survived. The family survived. But... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's too many people now that know that it's like she's like that doctor calls her. It's like she's a murderer. Like he knows about her now. Like everybody knows. So it's up. Game's over, girl. Well, I mean, logically, they they made the prequel, which just sucks because the the girl who plays Esther was such a good actress that they're like they can't really do this without her. It feels like. How do you do a sequel? She just gets out of the ice. They can't do a sequel. I mean. So the ending is, yeah, they go back to that pond where, you know, the the daughter almost drowned when the wife was drunk, and they fight in the water or whatever, and it just keeps going and going and going. And then, of course, Esther says the stupid line, like, Mommy, I love you. Like, it's like, come on. And then Vera says the line, I'm not your fucking mommy, and kicks her. Yeah, it was a little corny. That was... Like, Get off my plane. Roll like, uh, your eyes. Like, ugh. These one-liners uh, have to stop. Like, trick or treat, motherfucker. Like, it was one of those kind of, like, roll your eyes moments. So, yeah, you see her head just get, like, like, is like a, yeah, like a fatality in, like, Mortal Kombat. Like, the next snap, she falls into the ocean and drifts away, like, Jack from Titanic into the abyss. And then, yeah, and then they escape, get to the police, which I love the police just roll up right at the end, like every horror movie ever. And, you know, so it, it has its problems, but it's it's cool. It's It reminds me of, like, we need to talk about Kevin mixed with, like, Chucky, kind of, or, like, Child's yeah. Play. There could be a way to do the sequel where, like you said, the cops are right there. Imagine they ask, like, where is Esther? And they pull her out right then and there and get her and resuscitate her and bring her back. And then there's some kind of way where Esther still is playing the game. I know you said, like, there's no way because, like, the Sarn Institute's involved now. There's this involved now. What if there's a way where they blame Vera for Margaret again and... She gets out, and I don't know. I don't know. It'd be really tough to continue, but... I think what they did was a smarter option. I think they just should have done it sooner. Because now the woman who plays... She's a woman now, you know? Like, she's, like, I think she's, like, 22. Let's see. So... Uh, be like, in her in mid-20s. Yeah. Isabel Furman. Yeah, she was, she's 26 now. So for her to be okay. playing younger than in this movie, it's pushing it. But if this was, like, 2012... 
like yeah you could probably still pull it off but now it's like yo she's like pushing 30 like it doesn't you get that some of that deep fake technology harrison ford de-aging indiana jones stuff you're fine they can do it i mean probably but i don't just know. put just put it put like 10 grand in the budget to like de-ager i'm sure there's a way i mean they might have done that i don't i don't really know much about the prequel but the other thing is you didn't say it eric well who's the product of connecticut in this the movie the movie's the product is it made based in connecticut you didn't see every license plate stop i did not dude it takes place in hamden connecticut Hamden? Yeah. I drive through there every day. Dude, literally, if you look at every license plate, says Connecticut, and then the school is Hamden Elementary School or whatever, where she drops her kids off. What? Yeah. You got to look at it, Brad. Dude, that's like my okay. favorite thing is to see to figure out where movies take place. I always look at license plates. I'm like, where's this movie? Where Where are we? I want to know. So this one, yeah, it takes place in Connecticut. So that's why I was like, dude, it's giving me like serious, we need to talk about Kevin vibes, because that also takes place in Connecticut. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on in Connecticut? Why are all these... <laughs> There's a lot of shit that goes down in Connecticut. Ed and Lorraine Warren, Connecticut. Like, it's... Vera for Murder playing Lorraine Warren. Hmm? hmm? In Connecticut. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Filmed in Canada, though. That's where you get the tax yeah. deductions. Oh, yeah. It didn't... Yeah, I think it was filmed in Montreal. But... You, fil- you film in Connecticut. Like, oh, boy. Get ready to pay those film taxes. They should give tax breaks because it's so close, but they're stupid. I don't know. It's so close to yeah. New York. Like, they could really... T- I think Jersey takes advantage of that, but... Anyways. Yeah. But, yeah, so I liked this movie. I wasn't completely blown away by it, but I think it's definitely worth seeing. Um, I mean, we definitely fucking ruined it, so if you haven't seen it, it's kind of... What One out of ten Keanu's, what would you give it? Well, we haven't done that in a while. I know. I just thought I'd do it. I'd give this, like, a six, eight. Yeah. For 2009, I give it a 7. I give it a 7 Keanu. It's good. It's different. You don't see a lot of these. And if the twist is held for, from someone watching this, mm-hmm. it could really pay off. It's like, oh shit, she's 33. Holy God, what? Not me. I, I had the movie totally ruined. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I luckily didn't because I, I saw it right when it came out. But, dude, like the acting in this was really good. Like, I tr- fully believed Vera from Arga. I Like, Peter Sarsgaard, I thought he was great. The, the girl that plays Esther was fantastic. The nu- the nurse, or the nun was fantastic. Like, everybody was good in this movie. Casting was great. Yeah. I think the acting was really good. The, the script was good. The cheesy mm. plot was a little... It, yeah. Maybe if they did, they did less, it'd be more powerful. Mm. Yeah. Like, so. less of the, like, I'm not your mommy, and, like, less of, like, falling through the atrium and, like two different kids falling off a clubhouse and they did a lot in this movie a lot yeah but i like like how they had to explain themselves like oh i don't want to go to the dentist it's like oh my god here we are with the dentist thing again Mm. like yeah we get it if you go to the dentist they're gonna immediately say like yo you're not freaking 12 these are canine like these are huge like wisdom teeth molars that need to come out now and that's like she's got fake teeth so that well yeah you see you see you see the dentures yeah in that scene so couple other things really quick this was actually inspired by a real story so in 2007 there's a 34 year old woman from estonia uh, her name was barbara Serkolov. connecticut no oh, boy. no an orphan who abused her oh first... i thought you meant estonia connecticut no, no we have no. an estonia here oh by, yeah by Hamden. <laughs> you're right but no, but anyway so an orphan who abused her first adoptive family and ran away from the police when caught she was eventually was found impersonating adam a 13 year old boy who had gone missing so that was Dang. real, and that happened two years before this movie. So that's kind of interesting. Like so, stuff like this does kind of happen sometimes. It has to happen. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of those things where, like, if this movie took place in the seventies, maybe it'd be more believable, right? Mm, yeah, a little bit because there's they couldn't call, they couldn't use the internet, like they wouldn't be able to call Russia or whatever. But yeah, I want to know how she faked her passport. I want to learn those things. They made it seem like oh, it's a foreign document. Like they don't really count. <laughs> what? <laughs> didn't they make it seem like they could just print them out in a you know an HP printer? Like, yeah, they, it's like no, yeah. like, you gotta get that legit. I know. Yeah, it makes you. It, it doesn't make uh, East, Eastern Europe look too legit. <laughs> yeah. So when she came over, did she have to like go through customs and like come on? Yeah. Let's be real. I know. Well, that's a, maybe the the first one explains how she got to America and like what she did. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to see. It's got um your girl uh, Julie Styles in it. Uh, Julie Styles is it? Yo, that's kind of funny. She was in the Omen remake, and mm-hmm. I was gonna say this movie kind of reminds me of the Omen. Yes. Where yes. a child and is always there when bad shit happens, mm-hmm. but like Damien was kind of unaware. But right. yeah, this I, I had I had, I had Omen vibes, but that's kind of funny because the Omen remake Julia Styles is in too, huh? 
Yeah. Interesting. But uh, Peter Sarsgaard totally thought he was uh, Bill Skarsgård's brother. Skarsgård, Sarsgaard learned that, so they're not related. Uh, tough break, tough break. Mm-hmm. And then, not uh, one of us, buddy. Not one of the Skarsgårds. No, he's a Sarsgaard, not a Skarsgård. That's tough. He, he might have found a pseudonym or something. And then, dude, Vera from Urgurgra, looking good. Looking good in this. I was gonna say. I was gonna say that. I never noticed it before, and, and I'm like watching this, like, hmm, hmm. She's good looking girl. Yeah, she's very pretty. She's Ukrainian. I stand with Vera. You know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, yeah, but she is Ukrainian. The pride of Ukraine. No, seriously. Get out of here, Mila Kunis. Yeah, Vera from Margaret. Yeah. Margaret, Margaret. And then also, um, you know, I don't know if uh, Leo was thinking about dating uh, the girl that played Esther, but by this point, she's definitely too old. Oh. My God, she's twenty six now. Could you imagine? If and like T- TMZ, just like it's like Leo produced a movie with her when she was twelve, and now she's still, and now she can he can date her for three more years until she's twenty five. Yeah. it's like what is wrong with this world? I know, I know. This, that would be that'd be too much. I know. I was thinking about it, and then Leo goes to the Oscars and was like boo, and he's like climate change. Yeah, every, like everyone must be like, do not clap for this man anymore. Yeah. Like, he's a great actor. We can say that, but in no way should we ever be like this. Yeah, Leo. No, this is wrong at this point. It, I mean, it's true though. He's dating girls pretty close to her age. Now. That's out of control. That's out of control. Yeah. So I was thinking about it. How do you think? How do you think this? You know, I was thinking, watching this, I'm like, oh man, 2009 must have been a bad year for orphans. Like, yes, people seeing this movie, like, uh, look, I don't think we should adopt anymore. I know they're we're talking about it. The DVD actually has a like a message being like, hey, this movie is not representative of adoption. Please adopt, and they gave like a website and stuff because they're like, this is not at all. Like, this is a movie, so like, don't not adopt people, you fucking idiots. Yeah, it's not a it's not a good look for the uh, orphan community. Uh, neither is Nacho Libre either. I hate all the orphans. <laughs> oh, Remember that line? I do. I hate all the orphans in the world. Oh, dude, that's such a funny movie. But I did I did read just now as I have Wikipedia the uh, Esther actress she does terrible work for Save the Children yeah so that's a great representative to have someone who played a terrible child to save the children well because so. the line apparently they got a lot of criticism from adoption agencies was just like it must be hard to love a child who's not your own like it was like that line and the adoption agency yeah. was like what the fuck so they like everybody mm. was like hey hey and she they're like hey we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry so they took yeah. that that line out of the trailer because it was in the trailer and then people were freaking out so they took it out yeah I mean, I, i'd imagine this i mean obviously the the prequel came out so they probably had to be a little more careful with that kind of shit but mm-hmm. like this movie coming out today I, especially with leo i mean I don't, know, I don't know, man. Might not fly as good. Oh, God. All right. Well, we've, we've been going on for a while here. Why don't we wrap this one up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. All right, we got to spin the wheel. You always make me move my phone so I don't. it doesn't buzz the whole time. The... I mean, I think that's helpful for the listeners. I agree. Spinning! <laughs> Fun House. Oh, nice. All right, Fun House. I don't know this one. It's uh, Toby Hooper who did um, Poltergeist and uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1 and 2. We got Joe Testa coming for this one, so this will be fun. Sign me up. You had me at Joe Testa. <laughs> oh, you, you send in the wolf? You had me? Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Joe's like our Mr. Wolf. Or whatever. All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much for listening into our episode on Orphan. If you haven't had a chance, you can listen to last week's episode, The Black Phone. And we will see you all next week with Funhouse.